Welcome back to our coverage from AWS reInvent. Uh, we're at the Amazon Web Services Customer and Partner Conference here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we're bringing you coverage of the show live on twitch.tv slash AWS. My name's Ian, I'm in the developer evangelism team here at AWS, and I'm joined on the far end of the table by Nikki from the Hi. same group that I'm in. And we've got two more expert guests for you here to talk about uh, one of the new services that we announced, or a couple of the new services that we announced earlier this week here at reInvent. So the first thing I'd like my guests to do is to quickly introduce yourselves. Can you tell us who you are and what you work on here at AWS? Sure, hi, I'm Sadipta Jyoti Prakash. I'm a product manager with the Amazon CloudWatch team. And hi, I'm Denis Vassallo. I'm one of the developers uh, that worked on CloudWatch Logs Insights. Great, uh, so you used a term there which needs explanation. So the first yeah. thing I want to ask you to do is please explain to the viewers on stream precisely what CloudWatch is and talk a little bit about the, the way in which customers use that service. So what is it for if you're a developer or application operator? Sure, so CloudWatch is a monitoring solutions that application and service owners use to gain visibility into the health, performance, and availability of their infrastructure. Uh, customers use CloudWatch to collect monitoring data such as logs, events, and metrics. They analyze and monitor their information using dashboards, and finally act on them using events and alarms. So these are some of the ways in which customers interact with CloudWatch today. Okay, great, and you've announced a couple of new features and capabilities at AWS reInvent this week. Can you just give a quick explanation of precisely what it is that you've announced this week that's new? Sure. So this week, this week we introduced two new sets of capabilities that help customers in troubleshooting and root cause analysis. The first one is automatic dashboards. So CloudWatch automatic dashboards are pre-built views that have AWS recommended best practices built in. And these dynamically update to provide the latest state of your infrastructure. We've also introduced CloudWatch Logs Insights. Logs Insights is a pay-as-you-go, a fully integrated log analytics solution as part of CloudWatch Logs. Great, let's start by exploring those automatic dashboards in a little bit more detail. Sure. Looking at your screen, I can see that you've got a demo there. So can we get the laptop on the stream and maybe you can talk us through what it is you have to show us? Yeah, definitely. So today I'm just emulating a day in the life of a dev DevOps engineer. As you can see, I've logged into my CloudWatch, uh, CloudWatch overview and two of my alarms are going off. It says Lambda error counts are high and my aggregations uh, aggregated Lambda duration is high as well. So Lambda is essentially my compute service that I'm using for my application, and this is a serverless environment. So I would like to instantly know what's causing these error counts to go up. So we've provided Lambda here, which is an automatic dashboard. So CloudWatch essentially collects metrics and logs from uh, Lambda functions by default, and here in our automatic dashboard, we've presented it as an aggregated view from across all the different Lambda functions in this account. So as now is it going to tell you how to fix it? Yeah, so here I can see that the error counts are really high, and yeah. when I hover over them, it's showing me that the Event Reader API is really causing this. I know Event Reader API is part of my Hello Retail application, Okay. So this is essentially a filter where we have integrated with AWS log group, AWS resource groups. AWS resource groups is essentially a way to logically separate all the different resources that you have in your infrastructure. So I'm going to quickly narrow down the scope of these, this dashboard using the hello retail filter. And I would like to know more about the error itself. So I'm going to quickly navigate to the logs here of the specific Lambda function. Oh, that's really nice. And I'll give you a quick sneak peek into what Daniel will be demoing in a bit. So we have Log Insights, which is essentially a log analytics solution. And I want to only focus on the errors that are available on this Lambda function. So I'm going to run a quick uh, error search on all of my Lambda uh, log events that are coming in into this log group. Here you can instantly see that it's showing me that there is an error reading table and the error is essentially, uh, the Lambda function is trying to access a DynamoDB table. That doesn't and exist? It, it does exist, but you can also see that there is a provision throughput exception. Ah. So it's mostly running out of capacity. So to check that, I'm going to quickly navigate back to my DynamoDB automatic dashboard. Wow. And here, I, it's already pre-filtered by the resource group that I had already chosen. And as you can see, the consumed read capacity seems to be high. 
but my provision seems to be low, so it seems like we haven't given it enough um, capacity. So I'm navigating using one of the links that we've provided at the end of every automatic dashboard, where I can jump to the resource itself. And we can see here that the table read capacity is super low. This might be a misconfiguration. So I can quickly set it to 50, and this should hopefully resolve the problem here. So this is a day in the life of a DevOps engineer, yeah. and the automatic dashboards help them get to the root cause of a problem quickly. And now you can view them all, view them all by project. Yes, so we've provided those resource groups to help see different projects, perhaps you have different teams having right. resources under the same account. You can group them using the uh, AWS resource groups. It's really cool. The observant uh, customers amongst you might have noticed the DynamoDB on-demand feature that was exposed in the console when yeah. we jumped over onto that as well. Yeah. So I think we talked about it in one of the earlier streams yeah. this week. But I saw that. We announced some enhancements to make it possible to automatically provision capacity in your Dynamo environment yeah. as yep. well. So you can maybe get away from having to change yep. that value in the future if you use that feature. Yep. Kind of cute. Cool, uh, anything else that you want to show us on the demo? No, I think I'm good today. Great, let's turn over to you then, yeah. uh, Daniel, and maybe you can tell us a little bit more about CloudWatch Logs Insights, yes. and explain a little bit more about what that service is and why you built it. Yes, yes, uh, so uh, you could always search the logs you had in CloudWatch even before CloudWatch Logs Insights. Uh, however, the searches were limited to just searching on individual terms like error or exception. Uh, and also sometimes if you were uh, going through lots of logs, uh, searches could take a while. So yeah. this is what Cloudwatch Logs Insights is addressing. Like this is a new interface for interacting with Cloudwatch Logs where you can now run sophisticated queries, not limited to just uh, searching on int uh, individual terms, but now you can do regular expressions, you can do aggregations, you can sort any way you want, you can visualize the results as a graph, uh, and things like that. Uh, and in addition, uh, every query is executed by a purpose-built query engine that we've built ourselves in CloudWatch uh, that most of the time can run through uh, large volumes of logs in just seconds. Uh, we've built this mostly to uh, help application owners uh, uh, troubleshoot and understand better the applications to their logs. We've had, um, uh, before we, our, our announcement a couple of days ago, we have, uh, I think, 70 or so beta customers. They all told us that this has radically improved their time uh, to uh, understand the applications. Uh, some of the customers that are helping us, um, uh, like uh, Pushpay or Gemalto, uh, told us this, right, that sometimes it uh, changed radically on how quickly you can understand what's happening in your logs. Great, do you have a demo that you can show yes. us? Can you show us a little bit maybe of how customers interact with the service? Yeah, yeah I'd love to see an example queries. use case. Yes, yeah, so let's start. Okay, so this is the interface of Cloudwatch Logs Insights. So a quick overview on the basics. You can choose the log group from the top. You can choose the time window you want to query. At the bottom, there's the results. Uh, and over here, we have the query, uh, where, where you like the query. So let's start a little bit explaining what we're seeing. So we have the fields command. The fields command lets you choose what fields to, to show in the bottom part on the results. And here we're choosing time, at timestamp and at message. These are actually two special fields. Uh, they're special because they are guaranteed to appear in all the log records. Uh, at timestamp is when the log event uh, happened, and that message is actually the log, uh, log event as written by the application. So this is a basic query. You can see here there's a bunch of log records, and this is the law, uh, log record text. Um, uh, and limit was basically truncating the results to just the top 20. Uh, but let's do something more interesting, right? So uh, actually, in fact, before we go there, on the right over here, we have the list of discovered fields. So this is a feature of CloudWatch Insights where if you have JSON data in your log content like we have here, yeah. uh, the service will automatically uh, discover the fields in your JSON and make them available to the right-hand side. There's practically no limit of how many fields you can have in a log group. Uh, we've seen cases with like hundreds of thousands of fields. In that case, there's a search feature as well for the discovered fields, so you can search if you know part of the field name. The, this helps you discover what you have there. It's okay, really so cool. uh, let's, for example, filter some of these results. That's something very common. So we're going to filter by one of the fields we have, status code. 
So status, oops. So status code equals 500 pipe. And instead of at message now, we're going to change this to, let's get the status code, let's get the path being requested, account ID, and maybe the duration of the request. Let's run this. And uh, this is basically filtering now uh, only those that and you're getting are the top 20 results? And we're going to get the top 20 again. Uh, so the raw status code 500, and instead of seeing the raw log events, now we're seeing a tabular view of the uh, four or five fees that we've chosen at the top. So uh, again, something simple uh, that you can, uh, might want to do. By default, the results are sorted in the reverse chronological order, so we're seeing the most recent records first. Right. But let's say we wanted to sort by the duration field in descending order to see the slowest requests in our web application. So it's as simple as this, that we added the sort command, mm -hmm. and now we're seeing the results <laughs> sorted by, uh, by duration. By how long they took. And yeah, we have some statistics here, like we scanned to 12 gigabytes in about six seconds. We did, we, the, the service here scanned nearly five million records in, in, per second, right? So it's very it's quick. Insanely fast. Much, much quicker than the uh, previous capability. So uh, something a bit more sophisticated. So this was just filtering and projecting different columns. But one of the most interesting things is summarizing the results instead of just showing everything, right? So we have the stats command for that. So stats allows you to uh, do statistics and group by one of the fields in the logs. So let's say we wanted to do this. So this is basically just counting uh, requests where status code was 500 and then group them by account ID. Oh, wow. So we're seeing basically, uh, if this was a real application, we're seeing which of my customers were getting status code 500 requests. The most requests. errors, yeah. Um, and you can sort of sort and do other things. For example, we can uh, alias this, give it a name as D and sort by D, oh, sorry, D, descending. And uh, this is going to sort the counts in descending order, right? so we can see at the top which were the customers most affected. What does the visualization tab do? Oh yeah, good question. So let's, uh, another type of aggregation is instead of grouping by one of the fields in my logs, I can group by a time bucket. So let's say, for example, I do this. You can right? group so by what? I can do by a time bucket. So Timed in this bucket. case, I've chosen a five second time bucket. So now, over here, this change that we don't see account IDs anymore, but we see a five second time interval between the, t between the rows. Ah. And we're seeing the count per that interval now instead of per account ID. So this is where the visualization comes in. Now basically, wow. this, this table here, the, uh, this time series representation, we can see it as a graph. And you can actually have more statistics. For example, we can do average duration, uh, and uh, min and max and, and percentiles, and they can all visualize on the same graph. Uh, we can see them over here as different columns, and on the graph you can see them sort of on the, uh, on the same chart. Uh, the one last thing I want to show is that any query that you run in CloudShox Insights, if you're using CloudShox dashboards, you can, you can add also it. add it to the dashboards, yes. So let's uh, take a look. For example, I'm going to add it to this default dashboard. Uh, by, by default, it goes to the very bottom, but you can resize it and move it wherever you want. So this is very handy uh, to keep track of something interesting in your application to know immediately uh, something that might be worth to be looking at. Well, so one question from uh, one of the stream participants asking whether it's possible to embed dashboards. I presume what they mean is having these widgets embedded within, a, within other web applications. Is that something that's supported by the service? That is something that's not available as of today, but this is definitely one of been, what has been one of our top asks, and uh, we're definitely looking into adding that capability. Okay. Great, and then the second question is from uh, Dig Dirge, who asks, uh, what's the uh, pricing model for the services that you've talked about? So how yeah. do these services get charged? The, the, the pricing model for, which you want to start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can talk about automatic dashboards. Automatic dashboards are available for free of charge. There's no additional uh, get charges or dashboard charges associated with it. Okay, that's simple. So, CloudWorks Insights is pay per query in US East 1. It's uh, half a cent per gigabyte scanned. 
and there's not no other costs uh, for using Cloudwatch Logs Insights. Uh, in fact, every Cloudwatch Logs user is automatically onboarded. There's nothing else to do, so you can use it right away. I was going to ask you I how customers another... get started. So the answer to that is there's also yes, uh, it's automatically it's provisioned into the console for you. Yeah. So if you if you are using Cloudwatch Logs, there's nothing to do. You can actually see the Insights link and start using it. If you're not using Cloudwatch Logs, uh, you could install the Cloudwatch agent on your servers and point it to your logs, and the logs will start getting uploaded. Uh, or else, uh, probably the easiest way to start using this, uh, there's several AWS services that automatically send the logs to CloudWatch, right. uh, Lambda, VPC, CloudTrail, and I think there's like a dozen others. Yeah. Typically, it's a one-click integration, and you can sort of start using insights. Uh, right, well, I think we got another question here from Volco. Are there plans for any more advanced APM additions to CloudWatch? For instance, seeing the delay between processing time, database, lat latency, et cetera. Sure, so as a CloudWatch or an AWS service, we are listening to customers and trying to understand what are the capabilities that helps you get with get started with monitoring quickly. So as and when we are getting in requests, we are definitely trying to prioritize them and see whether it's a right fit for the customer to get started right. easily. Yeah. That's awesome. Can, uh, can you talk briefly about custom metrics? So that might be an area where customers can build their own integrations for, yes. for solving problem cases like that. Definitely, so you can use custom uh, metrics through your agent, so essentially have your application send us your metrics through the agent itself, and visualize some of your custom metrics that can be from your business applications, and view them side by side of your infrastructure metrics, and yep. see if the performance of your specific infrastructure is actually affecting your business metrics at the same time. So this is something that you can do today. Right. Excellent. So, uh, there's no more questions from the stream as far as I know. I don't see know. any more questions from the stream at the moment. And I think we've covered everything that you want to cover. So let's wrap this segment up here a little bit early. We'll be back uh, very soon with our next piece of content for you live from AWS reInvent here in Las Vegas. Thanks to my guests for joining thank us. You. And thank, thank you for sticking with us on the stream. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Stay tuned. Bye.